Um, but why don't you tell me a little bit about the idea behind the network and why why you started this whole thing? Well, you know what's funny is um, – so Alexander Meyer, who was with the New Agorist Beer Company, who is with the New Agorist Beer Company, excuse me, uh, great, great guy. Um, me, I interviewed him after hearing him on Lines of Liberty. And I'm like, this guy seems pretty cool. Like, I love beer. Why not have a beer guy on the show? And uh, so I talked to Alexander and I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I'm doing this comic book called Liberty Force. And he's like, well, it just happens to be that I'm a graphic designer at Trey. You know, I'm like, cool. And so uh, me and him, I showed him my work and he was just like, it's OK. I'm like, what do you mean it's OK? Everyone else said it was great. And he's like, it's a, it, it's OK. Those are the people you and keep I'm around, like, by the way. Exactly. So I'm like, okay, so then how do I make it better? And he's like, well, I would do this, 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 and this. I'm like, okay, um, work with me on it. And he's like, okay, challenge accepted. <laughs> so from that point on, he was the one who critiqued my shit. And I'm like, fuck you at first. And then I thought about it. I'm like, that's the guy I need to have. And um, me and him started talking. We became really good friends. And, uh, he was like, you know what, man? I was thinking, I, I, he does this thing called Liberty.Menu, which was kind of like the Yelp for libertarians, agorists, and anarchists, right? I've never heard of it. And look it up. Yeah, Liberty.Menu, all right? So basically, if you sign up for that, then any libertarian-leaning store or business, you can find them to possibly get you know, food or whatever. So basically, it's libertarian-friendly stores hmm. and or businesses around the nation. So it's a really cool website, by the way. So please check it out. So anyway, so him and I start discussing these ideas and he's like, how about a hub for content? And I'm like, dude, that's been done a hundred times. It, it, I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't even know if this is a good idea. And he's like, well, we just need a name for it. And at the time I was doing Johnny Rocket Launchpad. And I'm like, well, you know what? Here's the thing, you know, uh, recently or about a year ago, uh, Kurt and Heather left the show. And uh, obviously, Heather and I were together for about four years, four or five years. And Kurt was one of my best friends through college. And he just started getting involved in other things. Things fell short with Heather and I. And so then I'm like, you know what? This is a perfect opportunity for me to rebrand everything. Mm. Let's just rebrand everything. Let's do it. I don't give a fuck. Let's just do it. <laughs> and he's like, cool. And he's like, what do you want to name the, the network? And I'm like, how about Launchpad Media? And he's like, well, isn't that the name of your show? And I'm like, well, yeah, but I, fuck it. I'll have, I'll come up with a new name. My network, my rules. <laughs> right. I'll just come up with a new name. And he's like, okay, cool, whatever. And uh, so from that point, I decided I'd retire the name Launchpad, give it to the greater good of the of the network, because we're always launching ideas in your direction. Right. And I like that framework or that slogan. I think it would be great for the network. I think it would be better for everyone to say that versus just my show. So I retired the name and I was like scratching my head and I was looking for a new co-host. And then I met Raylene, of course. And I'm like, well, this is what I want to do. And so I think Blast Off with Johnny Rocket is a cool name. I'm very proud of that name. And I love the name Launchpad Media. I think it's even better than Johnny Rocket's Launchpad. So I went with that, and here we are now. And I recruited very talented people, such as you folks. And uh, here we are with Launchpad Media 1.0. And uh, again, you can find it at thelaunchpadmedia.com. Yes, the the is important there, folks. <laughs> it, it is. It is very important. All right. Yeah, well. so so, I mean, that's what happened, dude. I mean, like, really, it was just like I was giving up my baby because that was my baby. Yeah. Johnny Rocket Launchpad was my baby. And it was going on for four years. Well, now your baby's bigger. Years. Babies grow. And now my baby is bigger. It's a, a grown-up baby. It's like, it's kind of like a punk-ass teen right now. <laughs> and and now I got to deal with the repercussions of that punk-ass bitch. You know, so... He's, he's, he's like, he's got, he's got asshole personality traits I don't like to deal with, i.e. he sounds like a right. podcast. They won't <laughs> stop the way, swearing. I, no, no, I swear, like, more than you guys do. But, like, what's even great is, like, I, I just love the people that I'm working with. Like, not only the content creators are awesome, like, such as you 
kind of people. Um, but the actual board, the members of our board are some of my best friends and they've become some of my best friends. Like they may not have been my best friends before, but now they are. And I'm just so happy to be surrounded by such good people. And what's hilarious is everyone's like, what's going on with Launchpad Media? And I'm like, I really don't know. <laughs> I haven't checked in in a while. And like I, I, hats off to my buddy, Rob Stratton, who pretty much runs this shit. And that's his job. He's operations. And he runs the company. He's actually doing everything. And I, I just got to give my a special thanks out to Rob Stratton for just pretty much running the goddamn company. Future guest and, Rob uh, Stratton, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love Rob. And he's such a good guy, such a principled libertarian, and such a good man. He's 90% of the feedback I get, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he actually, he we, we, we talk about things. I'm like, well, how are the shows going? Like, you listen to them more than I do. Because I try to listen to them all, but I can't. Yeah. And he's like, feel. well, this show's good. This show's good. I really like what they're doing over here. And I really like what they're doing over here. And how about this for that show? And, and, you know, he gives me his input because what he'll do is he works in construction. So he'll, like, have his, like, I don't even know if they listen to it or not. But his, his coworkers, who are all, like, legals. He hires them and um, pays them under the table illegally. And they listen to the show. And he's like, I don't know if they understand it because they don't know English. But I listen to the shows all day long at the, you know, at the work site. That was a joke about them being illegal. Um, <laughs> and they and they, they gave me their feedback. And a lot of people like this about this show and a lot of about this show and a lot about this show. So it's really cool to get the feedback from the average uh, construction worker down the road. And so... Yeah, I think the, I think the network overall is doing really well, and I'm really proud of the content we've been producing because it's really good. And I'm I'm really impressed with the the uh, the new show, The Law. By you the way, I, both. I, think I that love show is, DK's show. I, I, yeah, I do I too. Love, he, he needs two a week. Can we make that happen? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I love DK's show. <laughs> if, 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 if that's the case, we're going to lose the show, and it's not going to be mine. Um, <laughs> might be that I don't know. That postcards from Somali. I'm, sh- I'm joking. Oh. Um, no, actually, I, I love that they're doing a great job yeah, too. I mean, I, I mean, all the other content is just great. Um, but we still have that Saturday show opening, and what I want to do is this is a future thing. So this is kind of I don't know if anyone's heard this yet. I don't remember talking about it too much on my show. Uh, however, I do want to have Kim Ruff and Sarah Daggers, and they're going to do a show called Dirty Politics. My fiance, actually, as a matter of fact, and uh, I think it would be really fun to up. have. Wouldn't you? Yeah. And if I was, what's that? If I was going to marry Kim Ruff, I'd bring it up. I, that's what I, I'm saying. I said, wouldn't you want to bring it up? Like anytime you can. Awesome. Congratulations. I, well, it's kind of like a, it's like a secret squirrel shit, though. That, I mean, you guys are like the first to hear about it. Maybe I don't know if I've mentioned it before. I feel like you have mentioned. Uh, I know. I know. You didn't mention it. You told them they should do it. And so I'm not sure if that was before it was a serious thing or if it was just like that was the moment the idea transpired. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they're doing like a weekly show. I don't know if they're doing a monthly show. Um, but I do know that Mary Ruart is getting on board too with Ooh. us. Ooh. So um, I'm giving her <sighs> equipment list to buy. Like, what do I need to, to get this thing started? So I gave her like, Here's what you need. Here's like your core stuff. This list so, is way too long, too. Yeah, it would be kind of difficult and how to set it up. And but yeah, so I mean, I'm excited about some of the new things that we got going on. We have some new writers that are coming on board that I've been talking to. So I, I think we're slowly expanding. I again, I just moved to Arizona, so I've been here for about two weeks now. Wow. And it's been like I'm I'm still on. Unpa- I've actually done unpacking, but I'm still kind of getting situated. So it's been a transition. How's that? Yeah. yeah, two weeks is not a long time to be in a new place. Yeah, I mean, no. I, it usually takes me two or three years to get my stuff unpacked. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the problem with that is, though, you like if, if you have like a box in a corner, you like end up throwing like some pillows on it or like a, you know, like a fucking rug or something. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden it becomes your furniture. That's the problem. You have to you have to just buckle up and just unpack it. See, he said that is a problem, whereas I looked at <laughs> that a, as, as a feature. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. was a feature. <laughs> yeah. I got furniture I didn't pay for. Yeah, exactly. So, like, that's the thing. 
Like, that's the thing. Kim's like, "Uh uh-uh, you're unpacking that shit. Like, fuck. Leave it up to the woman. So, yeah, yeah, she's she's smart, though. She's got me pegged. She's like, nope, you got to unpack it now. All right, all right. I think it's so. a, I think it's the resourcefulness of living up in uh, Western New York. It's, a, it's mm-hmm. not a, not a very yeah. not a very pleasant place to live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's uh yeah, dude. But I, I've been really rivers. happy. I've been really happy. It's been it's really beautiful out here. Um, the weather is ideal, but I'm not much of a weather how guy often, because I'm usually in the see, studio. How often do you see the sun? Well, that's what, <laughs> what he was getting at. Yeah. Uh, well, when I smoke. It's already too much. <laughs> yeah. Fuck the yeah, sun. Yeah, like I, I go outside and smoke a lot. So, oh, and uh, I have a new. We have a new policy here in the studio: no smoking. Oh, and so oh that means God. that my equipment might last longer, and uh, and I have to go outside. So I have to pick up a new habit, probably Co- Copenhagen. And uh, yeah, so that sucks. Chaw. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Chaw. Yeah. You so people. okay, any more questions? Come on, bring yeah. it. Yeah, no, I was I was just getting ready, letting you talk. Um, all right, so what is the best concert you've ever seen? Oh God. Um. Hmm. Best concert. I would have to say Steely Dan. Oh. Actually, I saw them right before Walter Becker died oh, or passed. You, you got lucky. Yeah, so I saw them about three years ago, and they were awesome. Wow. It was a great show. Really good. Even though Fagan still, you know, he, he, his voice is gone. You know, like, can't hit those notes back in, like he did in the 70s. But it was a great show. It was really cool. It's really funny. cool to hear it's him. funny. I never really thought of Fagan as having, like, an exceptional voice. <laughs> no, no, he never had an exceptional voice. And now it's just really not uh, there at all. And it's just not there at all. Like, at least it sounded bad, but he can hit the note. Yeah. Versus now where he's like, it sounds bad. And actually, I like his voice because I've just come to like the band for so long. Yeah. I've always kind of liked his style. Like, no one in their right mind would say Tom Waits is a great singer. True. Um, But he's awesome. Like, he is fantastic. I love Tom Waits. I'm going to hoist that But I would never say... I would never say Tom Waits is a singer singer, you know, like he is talented. He's an artist, but I would not classify him as listen to the singer. But he's an artist. But that's not what makes you good as a vocalist by any stretch of imagination. What makes you good as a no. vocalist is being uh, having a fingerprint that your voice is like Tom. Uh, what is it? Uh, I always say Bob Dylan can't sing to save his fucking life. But, you know, uh. you know, Bob Dylan when you hear him. We 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 like yeah, I, I I love I love Getty Lee. He gets on most people's nerves, but you don't mistake <clears throat> Getty Lee for anybody else. I'm glad that's I, the thing. I'm glad I didn't yeah. see the R40 tour like you, you were saying about before. Four Fagan completely lost it. It would have been hard watching. Like the, I've seen live cuts from the R40 tour, mm-hmm. and it would have been real hard to watch Getty not deliver like that in like live. Well, that's- that's the thing, though. It's like I think that's what separates a lot of known musicians from unknown musicians is actually having a style, a unique sound. Absolutely. Especially the front man. You know what I mean? Like Sammy Hagar had a sound mm-hmm. like like it or not. He was unique. You, you you would hear him and go, that's Sammy Hagar well, that's- versus... That's the thing. I think I, I and this is tangentially related, but I think that's where like rap music gets an unfair shake in all of this, because it's like, oh, it's just people talking. Anybody can do that. Like, yeah, sure, they're right, but the guys that work and that that make money doing that, they have the same quality that every good front man has out there. Is that you? Are, they're immediately identifiable. Eminem exactly. doesn't sound like anybody else. Right. Um, you know. Ludicrous sounds style. like ludicrous. They sound like them, and that's what sets them apart. Fifty Cent in the game, I couldn't really tell you much difference between them other than the Fifty Cent sound like he's retarded. That's why <laughs> Humpty Hump did so well with Digital Underground, right? Because hey, yo, I'm Humpty. Yo, you know what I'm saying, baby? Would anybody yo, know like, who Shock G is without Humpty? I I love fucking well, Shock G is Humpty. I know, but would you anybody know, know. know who he is without his alternate person? Like not the persona. Exactly. No, it it was shock. It was Humpty that made Digital Underground big. 
absolutely. You know, and and they were like my favorite rap group even, of even, all time. Even even Pac couldn't do it to them. You know, but here's the thing, man. Like, if you look back, like one of my favorite bands, like so when I grew up in high school, which is hilarious because everyone was like listening to Nirvana and, uh, you know, I don't know, Pearl Jam and all that other bullshit. Mm. What they were listening to that, right? And I, I was like into shit that nobody else was into. Like, so I guess what got me in the jazz would have been Parliament Funkadelic. So, um, I was a big fan of George Clinton. When I was like 16 years old, I mean, I bought Funkadelic, Mommy, What's a Funkadelic? I bought Free Your Ass, Your Mind Will Follow, <laughs> Maggot Brain, Cosmic Slop, Let's Take It to the Stage, uh, Tales of Kid Funkadelic, One Nation Under a Groove, Chocolate City, Mothership mm -hmm. Connection. I mean, I had all these records, right? And I was 16 years old, man. <laughs> and everyone's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Whoa. And I'm like, these guys are fucking awesome. Do you know why? They weren't that good. As musicians, they actually kind of sucked, but they created a, a world mm -hmm. and they created a universe, which was so cool. Like they created all these cool concepts that most people wouldn't get. Like it was so out there, man. There was like fucking Sir Noah's Devoid of Funk. Whoa. This character, like they created this world. And that's what made those guys so fucking badass. Well, I, I found out recently, I was watching a, uh, a a documentary on them, and I never realized that Parliament and Funk... I knew Parliament and Funkadelic were the same thing. I never realized that the Parliaments were, the were like, the precursor to Parliament. Right. The old, yeah. like, they, the old doo-wop group became It was a doo-wop. It was a doo-wop group, <laughs> yeah. And, like, and well, then they I, started... They wanted to get on Motown, but they couldn't. Yeah. So then uh, uh, the parliament, or they, they switched their name to Funkadelic. Mm. And they were with Westbound Records in the 70s, right? With early 70s. And it was a Detroit record label, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so they got their start with that. And then they slowly got bigger. And around 73, 72, 73, they ended up getting a deal with Casablanca Records with Parliament. So Parliament was the polished version of Funkadelic, which yeah. they had horns and that, the whole night. So their first record was um, Up for the Downstroke. Yep. And their second record was Chocolate City. And those were really great records. I mean, they were really cool, but they were fresh. They were hot. And then Parliament, man, they just went on this whole new trippy fucking ex like space odyssey with a bunch of black dudes in space. And it was fucking <laughs> cool. It was fucking awesome. And I'm like, sign where do I sign up for this badass shit? Like, like P-Funk Earth Tour was the bomb, dude. No pun intended. It was the bomb. And, dude, I was like the only white kid in school who's listening to this shit. And people thought, what's wrong with this cracker? You know, and I'm like, I'm cool, man. I often what? think to myself, what's wrong with this cracker when referencing <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. All right. So, hence, hence. So I'm all over the fucking map, man. All right. Well, Musical then, pace. then this, then the, the next question should be a real fun one for people who are mm -hmm. all over the map. For people who are mm -hmm. all over the map. For